did you have to do a, a password? So no, thank you, but I would love your help just making sure everyone has a chance to speak. Um, I, um, it took me, it took a while to, for it to let me in. So I was sort of wondering if there was a waiting room, but it didn't say there was a waiting room, but it would just took a while. So. What about you? Does it take you a while? Are you talking to me? Yeah, sorry, Alexandra. Um, yeah, no, Alex is fine. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I got in and then I somehow rather everything stopped and then I redid it again and I came back in. So I'm not too much of a problem. Well, and I'm trying to monitor my phone and my email because if it's hard for us, I don't know how hard it will be for Sam. But I'm hoping it will be possible and likely and easy and all that stuff. Well, I think it was maybe something with my connection here. I don't think really? it had to do with you guys. I don't know. Okay. So I am contractually obligated, not really, but I'm going to say that uh, you are all being recorded. Thank you for consenting to be recorded. Uh, if you don't want to be recorded, you can hide your beautiful face, but I hope you won't do that. Ben, I uh, had an option to record in the cloud and I chose that. Easier for all of us to get to later, I guess. And all, all I did was I then posted it from my cloud to the Facebook group so that I never had to share cloud because I don't know how to share a cloud. I'm not a good cloud sharer. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Maybe it'll bring rain later. Right <laughs> oh, Barbara needs the rain with her fires all around her. Yeah, yeah. Well, we just right. steer the cloud over there and let's put lots of seeds into it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We had some really weird random rain in uh, the other night, unexpected. Mm -hmm. I figured it's just acid mm -hmm. rain from all the smoke. Well, that could Look be. Look at this beautiful Donna Williams with her beautiful shirt and a really good internet connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got my RBG button. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. Yay, it's Penny! <laughs> Hi. So nice to see you. Good to see you. How is everybody? Real good. Doing all right. Strong and healthy. Coughing from the smoke, but I'm okay. <laughs> oh, are you still still having smoke? Yeah, we had another fire break out a couple miles down the road this morning. They got it contained, but it's heavy smoke because of it. And today was the first day we had blue air and blue sky in about eight days. Wow. So we've been in the average, the high 380s to 460 oh on, on uh, you know, hazardous air. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we we opened a window in the house today for the first time in like two oh weeks. Gosh, like, there yeah. he is. There he is. Sam. Oh. He's, someone's oh, on the phone telling friend. him what to do. Oh my God. I was just, tell, I was just about to write you. Oh, he's so handsome. Oh. Hi, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> After all these years. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh, hi, Sam. Hi, hi Sam. Sam, everybody. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Sam. All right. Well, good afternoon, I guess, where you are. <laughs> yeah, it's morning for Frank. Oh, it's yeah. afternoon, evening for the rest of us. It's so good to yep. see you, Sam. Oh. Woo, big screen. <laughs> so how are you doing, sir? Well, <laughs> the best I can say is I'm alive. <laughs> uh -huh. That's... Not so easy to do sometimes. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, well, to look over all of your names here. Mm -hmm. Baby, can you not do dishes right now, please? <laughs> can you not do dishes now? I'm, I'm going to say that was never said in my house. Um, <laughs> welcome, everyone, uh, to our reunion. Uh, I want to thank JD, who is recording us. He's going to put it on the cloud, which is a thing, I guess, and uh, hopefully be able to post it on our Facebook uh, site 
as well. I want to thank Ann for helping facilitate it as well as Barbara. Um, Lashana Tova, I think is how you say it, for our Jewish marchers who are here. And it is a wonderful mitzvah to have Sam Wolf with us. Um, I want to start out today, um, if it's all right with folks, um, by calling for a moment of silence. Uh, because most of you know we have lost our wonderful Lenore. Um, and as most of you know, we have lost our wonderful Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And I know many of us have had other losses in our lives and in the lives of those around us. So uh, if you don't mind, I would like to call for a moment of silence for those we have lost. Thank you. And for those just joining us, that was our moment of silence in memory of our dear Lenore, our dear Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And Lynn. And other dears. Lynn. And, and, dear and also Dave Petit. And Dave Petit. Mm -hmm. Within the last yeah. month, lost these four. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Lynn and Dave. Lenore, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, may their let may their memory be a blessing. Frank, it's wonderful to have you here with us. Frank's screen name was Lynn at first. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been that way uh, wherever I go, and uh, and if it sticks with my name on it, well, that's just one more little transition. As uh, instead of Lynn speaking for me, I will be speaking for her. But uh, yep i'm getting things in my own name now and figuring out i'm, I'm a, a toddler in cyberspace and uh, i've grown a year in the past month that way so uh, it, it's it's uh, it's coming along we're uh, as i say we do people rescue so there's a couple of people that we have uh, at our house and uh, I haven't been alone through all of this at all. Uh, the, the, someone's been with me wherever I've had to go and it's, it's made it a lot easier. And uh, my daughter calls me up from LA to tell me to eat and sleep and all these things that people forget to do. I'm not about to forget these things, but I let the, they can go ahead and spoil me that way. It's all right. They can yeah. go ahead and uh, express their concern and, and be nice and, and make meals for me and stuff. I'm, I accept it all. Oh. Thank you. Good. That's great. Glad to hear it. I'm glad you're in that. Are you being held by your community? It sounds like as we hold you virtually as best we can. Yeah. Through Zoom. yeah. And more of us are joining. Um, there's someone called Soham with two people, and I I can't quite tell who it is, but it looks like Shirley Carter. Oh. What that? Amy. Amy. It's Amy. Amy. Hi, Amy. It's nice to see you. Amy, I didn't hear Hey, Ben. Hi, everybody. This is my Hi. partner, Yogi. Hi, Sam. Oh, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> Hi. Amy and partner, it's wonderful to see you. Do you mind if I rename you so that people won't be like, who's that? Yeah, that's fine. All right. What What, what is your name, Amy's partner? Amy and Yogi, like Yogi Bear. Yeah. Wonderful to see you both. <laughs> so we have Sam Wolf with us, and this is exciting. And Sam oh. is, uh, I think you had someone on the phone with it talking you through how to get on Zoom and stuff like that. Oh, uh, am I supposed to say something special? Uh, it's such a pleasure to see these people. And I'm wondering, is there a way to get everybody's contact information? I have an old silver thread, but I don't think it's much good anymore. <laughs> I think so. I think what, what would be the best way for people to get it to you? Should they email you? Email is good. Okay, I will put okay. uh, your email in the chat box. Everyone here is mm -hmm. Sam's email. If you would all email as uh -huh. you 
are willing, um, your mm -hmm. contact information to Sam, that would be lovely. What do you have in your background? What's hanging up? Oh, <laughs> I, uh, uh, I'm learning how to use the uh, clothes dryer here <laughs> and it didn't quite finish the job and I didn't want to put it in for another cycle. So I have a, a clothesline in my room. Awesome. <laughs> and I have a lot of stuff. I have a lot of stuff hanging all over the walls here. Uh, well, I don't know what to say, but, uh, oh, well, maybe I can show you one thing here. Uh, I have gone crazy over some little fibers which are almost invisible. Uh -huh, and, yeah. uh, there's a little stone on here and it's spinning away. I gave it a twist mm -hmm. and look how long it'll keep spinning mm -hmm. and then it'll start, stop and go back the other way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's sort of magic. That's yep. fun. And, uh, <laughs> That's my entertainment here. <laughs> That's better than television. I was getting hypnotized a bit. I, I didn't hear that. I was hypnotized. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sam, uh, where did the fiber come from? Uh, well, I'm finding out that there are more, there are lots of fibers all over the place. Um, but that one came from a little electric cable. Uh, it was just a very small wire that used for, I don't know, the electrician was gonna throw it out. I says, hey, can I have a couple feet of that? And it's in there. And one person said, oh, maybe that's, it. these bunch of fibers are there to help get the insulation off if you want. And, uh, 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 somebody else said it's to help pull the wire through a conduit. So I don't know what it's for. Did I disappear? Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. nope, we see you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sam, when somebody speaks up, their picture jumps onto the screen, but we're all here. And all you got, if you want to be visible, you, you just speak up. Uh, okay. I think that's how it works. <laughs> and there. there you are. And there's the little grid pattern up in the upper right corner. If you want a grid of everybody's faces, you can click on that. And oh, yeah. Yeah, I did that before. Okay. The hosts of the I'll meeting. Do that can, so I can. The hosts of the meeting can spotlight a video, which I did for a while. Um, oh, there we go. You want everyone else right. to see. So I did that um, before because I just wanted everyone to see your beautiful face and I may do it again without warning. Yeah, <laughs> big and bold. <laughs> there but, he is. <clears throat> but if you can't click ah. on... <laughs> <laughs> just get over it, Sam. We love you to pieces. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I look, it ain't in one piece. I'm in one piece here. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. Hey Sam, where are you living? Where, what? Where do you live? I live in a place called Myers Apartments. It's part of a campus called uh, Menorah Park or Montefiore. I don't remember which. <laughs> uh, I've been here almost two years now. And that's the way it is. Do you have an active uh, political community there? Uh, well, I think I think most of the people are voting by mail. We we'll put in our ballot application, and uh, I hope that I am expressing a general view here that uh, I'm not voting for the current person. Good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, that's a pretty safe bet. I think he's a person. Person. That's, <laughs> uh, that's questionable. Always generous, Sam. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sam, I have a question for you. 
Well, I was driving home just now from a volunteer thing. I heard a radio show where it was talking about people's top five experiences in their life. I love that. And I would love to hear what some of your top experiences, like if you had like just, could just share like maybe three top things that have happened to you or that you have done in your life. I would love to hear about that if you're willing to share, please. Well, the one for sure was the Great Peace March. That was a big adventure. Always a great And uh, now I'm hard pressed to think of whatever else. But oh, 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 well, uh, <clears throat> I worked for 30 years as a high school science teacher. Uh, then I worked for 17 years taking care of an electronic stock room at Case Western Reserve. And then I quite by accident met somebody uh, who taught at Fairfax Elementary School here in Cleveland Heights. Uh, we were at a bicycle, uh, learning something about bicycles at the time. And she mentioned that she's at Fairfax. She says, how would you like to volunteer? And that has been one of the best things of my life to do sciencey things for the little kids. Uh, just in, and, and just enjoyed that. And they, they ask interesting questions like, how come a helium balloon floats and an air one doesn't? And one of them asked this question, what if you mix DNA, hoo hoo, from a dog and a cat. What do you get? <laughs> and, and also, I'm noted for telling jokes around here, and you remind me of this one: a dog, a cat, and a parrot died and went to heaven, and God is interviewing them. And what have you done, dog, to deserve a place in heaven? And the dog says, well, I'm a great companion for mankind. And uh, God says, well, OK, you can sit here on my right side. <laughs> and then, Parrot, what have you done here? Oh, people like my plumage, and I say a few words, and they really enjoy that. OK, you can sit on my left side. And Cat, what about you? You're sitting in my seat. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cat for you all right that's a cat attitude yeah sure <laughs> oh goodness as my cat is grabbing my arm right now <laughs> mm -hmm. ouch she just bit me oh snotty little girl put off the couch it's my couch yes <laughs> hey, so, um, Sam and I found out I don't know how many years ago, because we've been, um, I've been fortunate enough to be able to visit with him and keep, keep in contact. And we found out maybe five years ago, Sam, the last time I was in Cleveland, that he was my mother's high school teacher. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Knowing each other all these years, we never made that connection. Wow. That's so, awesome. I had, a, I had her yearbook. And I looked, and there's I, uh, a picture of Sam. <laughs> I'm in <laughs> touch with another former pupil of mine who lives in Chicago. Her name was Prudence Warren, and married name now is Yantes. She lives in someplace in Chicago. That's amazing. Hmm. I remember some of these stories that you would tell when you're on the march, including that very joke, I think. And But I never got to ask you about your wife because she didn't visit. I, did, I don't think she visited the march, so I never know. For example, how did you meet your wife? Uh, hmm. Oh, I, <laughs> I met her in college. And uh, we had four nice boys. And unfortunately, one of my boys is no longer with us at his own action. Mm. Uh, and the three boys that I have are all on the West Coast, uh, on the East Coast, sorry. And uh, they're getting older. And 
And by the way, because of the Jewish New Year, I'm 3,700 years older than all my Christian friends. <laughs> <laughs> this is 5,781. Wow. Boy, am I old. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm, I, uh, sorry, I'm sorry oh, for you, maybe here's, I think, what, Go ahead, Sam. Uh, uh, yesterday, I had an opportunity to read. Uh, I had an opportunity to read to a few people, uh, supposedly poetry, but uh, I read... Uh, uh, two things that I like very much, and if you have any suggestions, I would like to uh, note those down. I read, uh, oh boy, what did I read? Oh, I have to, I'm quoting here from a cartoon here. My train of thought often leaves the station without me. It'll take a while for me to remember. Oh, I read The Wonderful One Hoss Shea. I don't, it lasted a hundred years to a day. Uh, and it was made in such a perfect way and that on and on it goes. And uh, I suggested that as, as a means, a moral for how people live. The wonderful, I hope I'm telling you this, they, Every part, you know, ordinarily something, this breaks, the wheel breaks, the axle, the spoke, something, you know. But no, he made everything perfectly so it, nothing would break down and the whole carriage lasted for a hundred years and suddenly kaboom, it all turned practically to dust. And so people should not have to suffer from illnesses and this and that. They should live perfectly well. And then when the time comes, kaboom, the end. So that's the moral of the story. I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Sam, this is Karen. I'm down near Dayton, Ohio. Oh, in yes, I remember you. Yeah. I have somehow gotten in touch with you a couple of times. Right, and we talked about uh, my work in climate um, last time. I'm still teaching all, doing tons of workshops, teaching climate science and climate education. I wish you'd go to Washington, D.C. and tell our president that. Yeah, <laughs> I actually did put my name in the lottery to have dinner with him. <laughs> I thought, okay, this will be my chance. <laughs> but I'm sure the multimillionaires put more in than I did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, I just, it's so good to see you, and I'm realizing that I'm probably maybe around the age that you were when you were on the march. <laughs> well, you can't be, because you look a heck of a lot younger. No, <laughs> and I'm just, well, I'm thinking I probably couldn't do it right now, <laughs> I don't, unless I, unless I rode my bike maybe or something. I don't uh, think I do that much every day. You were, I, I, you were you're quite uh, impressive with what you have accomplished. And uh, thank you for the science things that you sent me. I, I use them in my hands-on climate science activities. Oh, did I send you something? Yeah, you, you, sent, you sent me some ideas for hands-on climate science activities. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, one that I like a lot, there are several things Litmus is not the only thing that changes color with acid or base. Uh, blueberries, turmeric, other berries as well, uh, red grape juice. What? Purple wine. cabbage. Huh? Purple cabbage. Purple cabbage, right. I've never done that one, but I know it, it's so. Uh, the... Uh, uh, skin of a red onion, also. Sam, this is Lynn. Uh, I will always remember you for our blueberry stories. Uh, oh, going Lynn, to restaurants. Uh, uh, I'm in Honolulu now. Uh, yeah. Oh, I but, remember uh, that. You, 
I remember going to restaurants with you in the morning and we would, you would entertain me and the waitress with all your uh, science stories of the breakfast before <laughs> us. And I will always remember you for that. <laughs> I remember that's where I first learned about blueberries because we had blueberry muffins. That's right. And, and some of it was green. <laughs> and I figured it was due to the alkalinity of the baking soda in the blueberry muffin. <laughs> and I think you asked the waitress for more baking soda just so you could do a demonstration. <laughs> I love you, Sam. <laughs> the baking soda wasn't, wasn't to help my digestion. <laughs> <laughs> could be. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, oh, you're, boy. You're a treasure, Sam. Okay. Hi, Sam. It's Alex. I'm just wondering, uh, I st are you still a ham radio person? Because I remember my name. Da 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 da. That's as far as I learned in the Morse code alphabet. <laughs> That's amazing. I thank you for the uh, card you sent me. Oh, and I cool. wanted to get back in touch with you and didn't know how to do it. Well, I knew I'd see you today, and I will call you one of these days. Okay. Yeah. Uh, send me your phone number by email, if you would. Okay. And I sent, I put my email up on the chat here for you, too. Well, it, well, I'm not active with ham radio anymore, unfortunately. Uh, things have changed. Uh, but I, I did get into the, when I was at Case, I got into the uh, Case Amateur Radio Club. Uh, there's one guy there who was a doctor, a medical doctor. He was a chief anesthesiologist at the uh, VA hospital and he uh, is now teach. He retired from that and is now teaching electrical engineering, and he has a pilot's license for flying. And I asked him if he ever uh, played a musical instrument. He says, "Yeah, he has a bachelor's degree in music too." <laughs> uh, he's in everything, man. Well. <laughs> It's good to see all you folks. Well, Donna Williams said that she recognized that poem that you said. Donna, what, what was it again? I didn't say that again. That my grandmother loved that poem you were talking about, the Deacon's One Horse Shay. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, she loved that thing. And, and actually, she kind of went that way. One day, she just all fell apart all at once, so... Gathering. That's a good way to go. I guess the moral, there's a moral to the story. That's it. Hey, Sam, it's Lori Graff. I'm calling from Colorado. It's awesome wait, to see you. Wait a second. I'm trying to look which, which one of you is talking here. I can't. It's me. Oh, I'm okay. Waving. okay, there you go. Hi. I just wanted to know how old were you on the march? Oh, I think I was 59. Oh, 59, a baby. Because uh, <laughs> I'm 60 now. Isn't it crazy? So that's 60? awesome. Yeah. How is well, that a thing? So 59. So Sam, tell us, what was it like being 59 on the march? And I mean, I was 26, right? So it was like, I'm sure so different. What was it like being 59 on the march? Well, I don't know different. I only know how I am. Uh, and at that time, uh, I was still jogging. So sometimes I would do some jogging as part of my walk for that day. And uh, I do remember, come to think of it with the ham radio, that I uh, drove the communications truck and I set up an antenna and did some, ha I sent some messages by ham radio for people. 
I think a lot of us remember that antenna, but it's it's such a good question, Lori. I mean, I was 19 and, you know, I could sleep on grass in a tent and bounce right up. And now I'm a, a very young 54, but oh, that would hurt. I would need physical therapy and massage and chiropractic. And how did you do it? Well, lucky that's all, I guess. Uh, <laughs> You mentioned chiropractic. Uh, <laughs> I'll I'll tell you. Okay, uh, I was talking to somebody who goes to a chiropractor, and as the chiropractor said to me, "Oh, I'm glad to see you're back." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, what is a very rare thing here is that I don't take any medication now. I just remarkable to folks that I feel better already. <laughs> that's that's incredible. That is incredible. It it, it is, and uh, I have reached the ripe old age of ninety six here. In case you don't know it. Wow. Hi everyone, this is Annette. I'm here in Eugene. I just joined in late. I'm just loving hearing hearing from you, Sam. And boy, talking to you is one of the it's a day where I'm needing some hope and just hearing from you feels hopeful to me. Hi everyone else. <laughs> Wonderful to see you, Annette. You you miss our moment of silence for um so many that we've lost, including RBG, um, including Lynn Salem, and Frank is with us. Uh, you can see his face uh, from Hawaii, um, including Lenore, and so many others. Um, but yeah, it's it's it, at the same time we have the cycle of life. Um, who is it that just became a grandmother from Chico, California? Andrea Roldy. Yeah, Andrea. it was Andrea. Grandmother Andrea, who in her picture looks kind of like Amy, you look now, like you haven't aged a day. And I'm like, how is she a grandmother? Right? Andrea looks younger than her kids, Levi and Naima, right? <laughs> I have a Sam Wolf story to tell. Uh oh. I was, in, I was in Cleveland. Daryl invited us to come to the open day of the. Um, uh, the folk, folk the National Folk Alliance Conference, which was happening in a hotel in Cleveland. And I knew that Sam Wolf lived in Cleveland too. So I come out of the elevator and there's this man who looks a lot like Sam Wolf. And so I said, Sam, Sam Wolf? And he said, no, Pete, Pete Seeger. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> But then he turned on his heel and he started down the hallway and then he stopped and he let out the biggest, longest motorboat fart I have ever heard. And then he, <laughs> he gave a big sigh and continued on down the hallway. Oh, that is hysterical. I was I just love that. embarrassed out of my mind for not rec recognizing Pete Seeger, but I was, you know, I was excited to see Sam. <laughs> Now that you mention it, yes, there is a strong resemblance. <laughs> oh, that's great. Sam, I, I, by the way, I propose, uh, this is Lynn, I propose that we should have a over 90s uh, group uh, oh. now on the Peace March. Uh, I've been in communication a lot with Mary Jane Jones in LA and also Ann Edelman in LA. So uh, they're both doing well. I was hoping uh, Mary Jane was going to join us, but I don't think she could today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so do, yep. Uh, like I said, there's a, a, a lot in the over 50s group that's still, still going. <laughs> Thank you for helping Mary Jane try to get on, on the phone. I'm sorry that didn't work out, Lynn. This is, I want to just raise my hand. This is Janet Holty. I don't think you can see my picture, but um, Nellie Trent, uh, who was on March, who was a, a walker and was also at every um, demonstration at every nuclear facility all along the way. Um, I met her in the Beatty Jail and she's turning 90 in October and she's doing well. 
Where is she living? Torrance, California. Okay, still in Torrance. Still in Torrance, yeah, like 20 minutes from the airport. Yeah. Thanks, Janet. Nice to see you, at least the letters of your name and hear your voice. Sorry, I can't master my phone any better, but I'm really happy to be here with you all, and I'm listening. Yay. And we're hearing, and is this Scott Yost who's trying to tune in? I see Scott's iPad connecting. I hope it's Scott Yost. That's fine. Since I missed the beginning, is this a just jump in as we go, or is there somebody facilitating and taking turns? What's Tell me there about are, the culture of this call, folks. <laughs> such a good question, and we haven't said it out loud. Um, I have the honor of co-facilitating along with the amazing Barbara Cohn. And um, by, by vote, we have decided that the topic for the second half of the call is get out the vote. And for the first half of the call, we're mostly uh, saying hi to Sam Wolf, telling Sam Wolf stories, asking Sam Wolf invasive personal questions. And uh, also, we had our moment of silence at the beginning that I mentioned. And Jennifer has joined us, too. Hi. Hi. Barbara, I did I summarize what we're doing? That was super helpful to me. Thank you. And... And then it makes me feel free to say to Sam and anyone else in here, who, I, who I'll, I'll go so far as saying this for people who are over 80, is that when I was on the walk, I, I was not wise enough to understand that there were people that were, were my elders that maybe held some wisdom. And I guess what I wanna say as somebody who now is 59 myself, I really, really um, value and appreciate the perspective of those of you who are who are older and um, I know have gone through really so many amazing things. I also know that if you're older that you have lost people that you love dearly in your life because that just happens by the time you get to be in your 90s. And um, the fact that you're here and talking with us is just a huge reminder to me in this moment in our world that it's so important to, to kind of stick in here for the long ride with each other and, and I hope I can can keep learning from all of you. <clears throat> so can I can I uh, tell a story about Sam? Mm -hmm. um, so I worked in the kitchen, and so early on, we when we were trying to figure out how to serve people, we brought forth a, a model from Rainbow, where instead of everyone lining up we had everybody get in a big circle so that then we would just bring the food so they could sit and rest and relax and and have this big communal thing so we thought we were doing this wonderful wonderful thing and i was walking through the area going towards the serving place and someone said God damn, they're just trying to show us another way in which they're in control of our food. And I just fell apart. I was just sobbing, so standing out in the middle of a field, sobbing. And Sam walked up to me and I told him, I thought, oh, this is what happened. And Sam just took me by the shoulders, looked me in the eyes, and he said, well, then just piss on him <laughs> and I just then was laughing hysterically and so we served dinner nobody liked the circle uh, so we went back to everybody standing in line but the virtue of just being heard be having that whole thing transformed into laughter in that moment has stayed with me my whole life and has made Sam someone dear to my heart. Uh, and there are many, many more reasons as well. Um, but um, thank you, Sam, for transforming one day, one moment in my life um, and, and, um, and just being such a precious treasure for all of us. I am having tears of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> ah! 
Okay. Right on. And I just want to echo that too and, and let Sam know how important you are to me, Sam. I just love you. <laughs> I love you so much. Oh, love is a two-way street, my dear. <laughs> Thank you. Can I say something? Oops. Go ahead. I just want to say too, just, you know, thank you for always being so present and thank you for um, all of our talks that we've had. And whenever I talk to you, you just always inspire me to find the joy in every moment in life. And I'm amazed, Sam, that after all these years that you just, it just is inherent in who you are. You just do it. And um, just thank you for sharing that with me. <laughs> well, I'm speech, no words now, sorry. <laughs> Silence reigns. This is Lynn again. I'm just gonna say that was good advice for nowadays too, that just piss on them. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna keep that in my heart. <laughs> can I, um, can you hear me? Okay, thanks. I just wanted to say, Sam, that I don't, you probably don't remember me, but. I had a little three-year-old boy named Jesse, and I was always running around camp going, Jesse, Jesse. And quite often you would know where he was. <laughs> and I just, I don't have real specific memories of you. I have memories of you as a loving energy field. That if anyone came within your presence, you were open and loving. And that's, that's how I remember you. Well, I remember you, the name Jesse reminds me of a fellow teacher uh, when I was teaching at West Tech in Cleveland. His name was Jesse Hayes and a, one of the two men that I just loved the Dickens out of. And one of his statements was, well, one of his things was, what do you and a hinge have in common? Mm. <laughs> and, the, and the answer is you are both something to it, or... Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sam, um, Ann Stillwater here. And I would like to hear how you heard about the march and where you were working at the time and how you managed to take off the time to go on the march? Well, I was retired from teaching already and I was doing a lot of gardening and uh, uh, Josh Silver, uh, I don't know how I heard about it, but I know that he was going and he was a neighbor of mine, and I thought if that youngster can go, and what am I going to do? You know, I might as well do it myself. And I was very much attracted because of ham radio. So uh, that's my story on it. Angie, you had a question. You have your hand raised. Hmm. Angie, you have to unmute yourself or I can unmute you. Hello, can you hear me now? There you go. All right. Um, I just had a, a, a short Sam Wolf story. I don't remember what the name ran, but um, Sam had gone to see a doctor and he came to, he came, when he got back, and, I asked him, how did it go? And he said, it was very frustrating. He said, well, the doctor kept asking me if I had blood in my soul. And I tried to explain to him the whole body thing. I said, well, somebody has blood in their soul, but who knows who? That's all. <laughs> That's funny. <sighs> Sam, I have a question. Quarter part history. Yeah. Sam, what's in your pocket? Huh. Your Do you have a shirt pocket? Oh, yeah. Do you have your typical stuff all stuffed in there? I have a uh, stylus for touching, you know, 
and I put a little piece of bamboo here uh, so I can find it easily. And everybody needs a magnifying glass. Uh-huh. And a calendar. Uh-huh. And uh, it says here uh, on the 19th of September, 3 to 5 p.m. Oh, that's now. Yep. <laughs> uh, does anybody remember the psych? on the Peace March. Uh, he and his wife. Dick Edelman. Yeah, and I, I walked with her and she always remarked, oh boy, we're coming to a town with a hardware store in it. <laughs> I always wanted something from the hardware, maybe to fix up the antenna or something. I don't know. Huh. Oh well. Tom Atley, you had your hand up. Yeah, I lowered it because it was bizarre. <laughs> I was gonna ask Sam, have you uh, did, have you ever seen Breaking Bad? I don't remember it, but I it's it, it's a series on on uh, TV, uh, and uh, it's about a chemistry teacher who oh yeah gets cancer and wants to support his family, so he goes into the meth business. <laughs> It's a totally wild story, but somehow you, I'd forgotten you were a chemistry teacher when, when that yeah. came up. Now you know why I lowered my hand. <laughs> I, uh, for a while, I, I love to grow stuff. And uh, I was looking for some seeds of a certain kind of plant, which is now legal in Ohio. Well, it's marijuana. I was looking for some. And uh, maybe this is not a good time to ask for some. <laughs> oh, well. Are you wanting some now? Yeah, were you just hitting us up just now? Uh, be nice if I could get some. I don't know that I, I wouldn't smoke it. Uh, Edibles? There's so many no, different kinds. Now. Just like to grow it. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, after I grow it, who knows what I'll do with it, but <laughs> he'll plant it in a in a parking lot somewhere. When I was with Sam in Cleveland one time, we were walking on Lee Road, which is a pretty busy street. And he was showing me um some planters that he had done like some monkey gardening in. He had put he, gorilla farming in. He had like <laughs> He's growing things at his house. All these seedlings were started, and then he takes them and he puts them in, in empty lots, and he takes care of them on his morning walks. Yeah, I uh, I get a big kick out of that. I planted onions will grow all winter, onions and garlic, and so uh, put some in an empty flower pot. You know, there's an empty flower pot. That's that's an opportunity for me. So I'll put something in there, and then I come back. In the spring and summer, they're growing like crazy. Well, we've had a couple other people join us. Bill O'Neill is here. Dan Coogan is here. And if Scott's iPad is Scott Yost, then Scott Yost is here. If it's not, then someone else is here. Anyone have questions? Our last 10 minutes focusing on the amazing, the wonderful radio ham operator, gorilla gardener, Sam Wolf, 96 years young. I just want to say a quick hello. Uh, I had a family event and uh, was only able to get on about five minutes ago. But uh, Ben, are you or somebody else recording this? Because I'd love to go back and watch the beginning later. Okay, I, I will definitely do that. Sam, it, it's so great to see your smiling face. I, I, I think of you often and it, it's, it's great uh, to have you uh, kicking off this gathering for us today. Well, good to see you and everybody else. <laughs> It's quite amazing that we can do that now. And it's not even costing me long distance phone charge. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and one of my favorite pictures from the march is one that Dan Coogan took of you after a walk with your feet in a bucket. And I guess oh, you're writing a famous. letter home. <laughs> one of my favorites too, guys. I love yeah. that picture. 
and I was writing a letter at the same time. Yep. Me too. Scott, we can't I, uh, see you, and we, I know we can't hear you, uh, but if you want to type, uh, we would love to hear from you in the in the text chat. Who, me? So Sam, Sam, um, Joe's family is in Cleveland. Is it possible to come visit you when we come to Cleveland, if we ever can travel again? Uh, if you want to visit me? Yeah, is it possible? And are they letting people in to? Oh, uh, well, with the pandemic, the visiting rules are very strict and uh, a half limited to a half hour social distance. Uh, but uh, and you wait in your car until it's your time and that sort of thing. So it's possible. Yes. Sam, do you have any questions for us? Uh, I think uh, I know they they would, if they haven't occurred to me yet, they might later. And uh, our this marvelous means of communication will not be then, but maybe later. Uh, there's always email. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, they all have your email now, smwlfe at gmail.com. And um, maybe now is a good time to transition to singing happy birthday for mm -hmm. our marcher birthday of the day, Mike Tisserand. I was hoping he would mm -hmm. oh, yeah, Mike. himself. But given that he, uh, I don't see him. Um, JD, who is recording, can you record it? I mean, I don't know if you want to record it so that it's, uh, if you're viewing it um, speaker or gallery, which would be better for recording a cacophonous happy birthday. But um, let us all sing. We'll, uh, everyone unmute yourselves. It's going to sound de like this delightful cacophony <laughs> will all sound terrible. Let's sing for Mike Tisserand. One, two, three. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Cha -cha. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. <laughs> you all sound delightful. I think we gave Sam a headache. <laughs> I feel older after that. Before we move on, I do have a question for you, Sam. Um, what is one of the most defining moments for you on the march? Something that was significant that happened that stays with your memories? Oh, I, I can't think of anything right now. But I'm sure there... I, I do remember trying to keep warm by the... Uh, uh, a kitchen truck or trailer, whatever it was, uh, uh, the engine was running and I tried to keep warm by it for a while. I don't recall any, I'll probably remember after this session is over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I, I love about that as an answer, Sam, is I think it speaks to, um, it kind of reminds me that when we tell the story of the march, we often tell it in sort of the big dramatic moments um, to tell as a story. But life is really those small moments of huddled up, you're cold, finding a warm place. And I don't know, just while we're living this big dramatic time, you know, I really take that as a like, remember those moments matter where you, you find a warm place in a cold, on a cold day. Mm-hmm. Yes, well said. Um, 
Lori, before you go, um, we're, we're, do you have a second to stay around, like a minute, or do you have to go right now? Okay, a little nod from Lori. And I just heard um, a little while ago, I forget it was Alex or Lynn, who, sa who said that what she remembered about Sam was was not as specific as it was, Amy, just this presence, this sense of welcoming presence and love. I'm, I'm not even saying it right, but it, it really resonated with me. Sam, whenever I saw you, I knew I had a hug if I wanted one, a joke if I didn't want one, <laughs> but I usually wanted one. Uh, I always felt welcomed by you. And I just wonder if we get a show of hands, if there's anyone else who, who felt that when they saw Sam Wolf, that sense of love, that sense of welcome. So I don't know if you can see this sort of sea of hands that's up, Sam, this effect that you had on us then that you continue to have on us and on oh. the world. Through How old was uh, Sam on the march? How old was Sam? 59. 59. I'm 57, man. That's crazy. <laughs> that is insane. I can't even believe people over 50 could do that thing. That is insane. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could do it. We were mentioning I that, I think, before you got in, Dan. Um, Scott Yost is, in fact, with us. He types, I'm going to say, speak it out loud for those of you on the phone. I, uh, it's that Scott. Sorry, I'm so, something far less than adept at utilizing the Zoom format, but I'm just so excited that you are here, Scott. Hopefully you can hear us, maybe even see us. Um, and someday when you figure out the format, we can see you if you turn your camera on or something. And I'm hearing some sound from Scott's iPad. I heard a little sound. So Lori has to go. Um, our next bit was going to be just taking a couple minutes before we left and check in and say how we're doing. And specifically, if you have some kind of project that you're working on with regards to get out the vote. So since you're doing that, can you tell us about it before you go? Or was that it and she left? <laughs> All right. So <laughs> she, she, her success is actually doing it, not talking about it. <laughs> we'll take that. Um, uh, Barbara and I talked about inviting um, the first people to check in to be the ones who really haven't been on as many of these check-ins. And that's you, Amy. So if you don't mind, we would love to hear how your life is doing. Um, you apparently have a partner named Yogi who is there. And, and that question is also part of the check-in. Um, what successes have you found as far as getting out the vote? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I'm sorry. I'm a self-absorbed school teacher. That's. I haven't. I don't have anything to contribute to this part of the conversation. But I love you all and talk away, and then I can go forward with some ideas. No, can you just tell us about your life for a couple seconds, so I'm, I'm just dying to know how you're doing. Oh, yeah, we're doing very, very well. Yogi's over here munching away on breakfast. <laughs> um, this is Yogi, my beautiful partner, who Sam knows. And um, we've been together for 14 years. And um, we've been living in Oakland. And I've been teaching public school for 20 years. And um, yeah, we, um, we recently have a, a practice of um, doing gratitude prayers before we go to sleep or when we're walking and, you know, helping to um, reshape our perspective for the day by saying everything we're grateful for. So I've been appreciating that time we've been spending together. We're in the middle of big change as a lot of Californians are selling and migrating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have been in our home for um, 10, 11 years mm -hmm. in the Oakland Hills and in, um, I think it was July, the very end of July, we looked at each other and we said, we're ready, we need to go. So since then, we have um, left our house, found a rental, moved into the rental. We have um, flipped our house and um, made it into something beautiful. And it went on the market last night. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we are purchasing, uh, um, 
much smaller condo in a co-housing community in Bellingham, Washington. Mm. Um, we will be living next door to my mother and father. Wow. <laughs> and we're very, very excited to transition out of Oakland, which is beautiful and terrible all at once together. We're very excited to transition out of an urban life and go to small town. So we will be here for the rest of the school year until the next summer. So we're managing a lot, buying and selling and figuring out how to um, keep, you know, rent here and, and what to do with the unit in, in Bellingham. And so we've been very taxed for the last six weeks, but we're very um, blessed that we can do this and we can change our lives and we have enough resources to do that. And we're also very blessed because we've had um, four or five days of clear air. So we did all of this amidst the fires and the heat and um, COVID and all of that. So yeah, so we've, we're just, we're happy. We're happy to be alive. We're happy to be here. And it's, and this is a huge gift to take a break from all of the details in our lives right now and to just sit and to be with you folks. So thank you. And there she is. She's happy too. <laughs> She's part of the Peace March family. She heard Sam was getting on this morning and she didn't plan, but she just can't tear herself away from yeah. the we good Sam. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so lovely to hear from you, Amy. I haven't seen you since other Sam's wedding um, up in Vermont. And um, Yogi, welcome to our Peace March greater family. You're a part of us now. I know, I know you guys. Like I've heard so many stories about you guys and all the great things you guys do. And I was like, I wish I was there. So I feel like I'm a part of the family too. You know what I mean? So for me, it's like, yeah, I want to sit in and I want to just see everyone and get to meet everyone and hear the really nice stories about Sam. So um, thank you for allowing me to share this with you guys. Well, thank you for sharing yourself and Anne, uh, JD's wife, Anne, everyone thinks she was on the march because she just sort of seems like she's one of us and you will doubtless be the same. Well, I, I was on the march for four days from Youngstown to Pittsburgh, but... <laughs> that, that's part of why I don't think it makes sense for me to host because I just don't know all of you quite as well as those of you who are there for nine months. But Yogi, please do come and bring Amy with you to the next reunion. Oh yeah, I'll drag her, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I missed the last reunion. That was the first reunion I ever missed. I couldn't make it. And I got to know Anne on one of the reunions. I borrowed your yoga mat every morning and we were camped out. Was that in Ventura, California maybe? Yeah, but I never knew that you were not a peace marcher, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's okay. I'm still meeting peace marchers after 30 years. It was like, you were on the march? I didn't know that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I want to hear your great ideas about voting, and so I'm ready to listen. Who has great ideas about voting? Anne wants to maybe tell us how you're doing. And not to put you on the spot, Frank, but I know a lot of us have had you on our minds. And uh, at some point, if you if you do feel like sharing, um, we'd love to know how you're holding up, too. Oh, well, I can talk to you. I, I just unmuted myself. Yeah, uh, Lynn and I had a third of a century of love and companionship, and I am so much more grateful for that. And I'm still kind of warmed through by that and by Hawaii. Uh, I'm holding up very well, better than I would have thought possible. And uh, yeah, what, what, what I'm doing, uh, waiting for substitute teaching to come back because I, I go around the corner in my neighborhood and substitute teach when they call me, which typically three or four days a week during the school year. Well, that will happen again someday, but it won't be this calendar year, apparently. Okay, whatever. I'm also the music director at our church, and I've been working on songs. I've put a couple of songs on YouTube recently. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, uh, Hawaii's politics are, are doing rather well. We have a huge Democratic majority in the legislature, and uh, nearly everyone is, uh, and we, our, our voting is completely vote by mail. So there's not a lot of get out the vote kind of things to do. I'm gonna fill out my ballot and stick it in the drop box at the park two miles from here. Uh, 
things are going well out here. As I was saying before, uh, Lynn and I do people rescue and I've got a couple of people that I'm rescuing that are staying at the house here and uh, I've, I haven't had a lot of alone time, which is just as well under the circumstances. So I miss Lynn a lot and uh, things keep uh, reminding me that she's, uh, the, the time is moving on and, uh, and I am moving on too. I will, there's uh, <sighs> still a lot to do in terms of picking up on our finances. She always did that. Um, but it, it's, all, it's all going to make sense. Just like when we moved here seven years ago, I keep saying one day at a time, one task at a time. And, uh, well, I should say about the, uh, the elders on the march, I was gonna say that uh, people like Sam, that like my parents' generation had been through World War II, had been through the depression, and we're just not gonna sweat the small stuff. Uh, you had a real good attitude that helped us to uh, keep on an emotionally even keel uh, as all of the uh, this eventful stuff was going on on the peace march. Uh, I had a lot of my ageism beaten out of me on the peace march, seeing young people like Evan Conroy and Ben. I didn't realize just how young you were at the time, Ben, but people doing complex and things and leadership things. And the, as, as ever, people have been remarking, people of mature years, undertaking the, the physical challenge of the peace march and holding up just as well as anybody else. So, uh, well, that's what I have to say for now. I'm gonna mute myself again. Well, thank you, Frank. We've been, we've been holding you and Lynn in our hearts. Um, um, actually, thank you. Frank, would you like, you don't feel like, you, don't feel like you need to do this at all, but if, uh, you would, if you would like to share more about the specifics of Lynn's death, Okay. I, I would love to hear, and probably other people would too, but a only lot if of, you okay. want to share. Well, uh, it was a Tuesday evening. Uh, she, we'd been do, doing perfectly fine the day before we went to a, an appointment to, at the retina doctor, and then we uh, planted a tree in our backyard that was outgrowing the pot that it was in. That was all on Monday. And then Tuesday, she started having this terrible tummy ache with uh, vomiting and uh, we thought it was something, you know, something that would go away. And uh, after about an hour, it was just getting worse. And we decided, well, we probably better go to the hospital. So we packed up a little bag of things. This is something we've done before. Both of us really, Lynn had had a heart attack a year and a half earlier, a relatively minor one, as it turned out. So we packed the bag and then when it came time to go to the truck to head for the hospital, uh, the young man who's staying with us is uh, about my size and even stronger than I am. And even with his help, she couldn't walk as far as the driveway. And that's when we knew it was time to call an ambulance. And they came fairly promptly and uh, got the gurney and she was in the back of the ambulance and I asked the guy if I should follow them and he said no they, they're not allowing any visitors so what you should do is stay here and wait for a phone call and uh, we'll let you know we're heading for Queens West which is the nearest hospital to we're way the heck out in West Oahu. Uh, Queens West is a very fine hospital it takes about half an hour to drive there from here and everything else is further in that direction. So uh, I've Okay, so I, I managed to reach into the ambulance and kind of squeeze her toes a little and say, I'll see ya, which turned out not to be the case so much. Uh, eventually I went to bed. I sent a little text to her saying uh, the thing we always said at night, good night, my love, sleep well. And I sent it, I don't know if you ever got it. And then I realized, okay, that kind of works either way, doesn't it? Kind of works either way. And uh, then I got a call at 1.49 in the morning that uh, she'd had emergency surgery for an ab abdominal obstruction or a tear or something. Something broke in there and they were trying to fix it and her heart stopped and they couldn't get it going again. So uh, that, uh, 10 minutes later, they called me to let me know. And uh, the young man, uh, Alex, we, we 
got some, <sighs> got in the truck and drove over to Queens West at two o'clock in the morning. And uh, uh, there was Lynn uh, with this tube thing coming out of her mouth left over from the surgery. They said they had to leave that in there in case the medical examiner had questions. They had to leave things kind of as they were. So uh, from the onset of symptoms to being pronounced dead took less than eight hours. That's uh, a shock in some ways and I, I have to say it's a blessing in other ways that we weren't agonizing and it just was kind of a matter of fact thing. Uh, just kind of boom, deal with it. And uh, Lynn was there looking so relieved and I've realized since she had terrible pain the first day of her life when she was born with multiple birth defects and had her first major surgery at the age of 10 hours without anesthesia, was not expected to live to, to reach three years old, let alone 67 and three quarters. And she had terrible pain on the last day of her life and too many days in between. And it is all in what we call divine right order. It is all as it should be. I am left in this beautiful place. Lynn got to spend seven years here. I wish it had been longer for her sake, but she got to spend seven years here. I will be here for something like 30 years altogether by the time I'm on my way out. Uh, that should any are there any questions? Uh, I think that pretty well describes how it went. Any Thank you very much for sharing. I, it, it, yeah, it's good to have a few more details and to picture what was mm -hmm. going on for you and how hard that was mm -hmm. for for you yeah, and for it, probably to be alone. It helps people to get their minds around the concept because. Outwardly, Lynn looked so vibrant and so happy and so uh, cheerful. And uh, to some extent, it was a front that she'd been keeping up for decades. Um, but yeah, it helps people to grasp how it happened and, and to, to fill in missing pieces in what, you know, everybody loved Lynn and we, everybody misses her. Uh, it's become clear to me from many sources that everybody enjoyed her company and miss her. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to help people to round the corner on this, shall we say, that, that you're kind of stuck or, until you know what, what, what the corner looked like. It's hard to get around it. But now we're, this is where we are. This is where we were. And, and it had nothing, her death had nothing to do with COVID, but it did affect uh, the lack of a proper goodbye as we parted company. But we'll, I hope to see her again somewhere, someplace. I, I had the silly idea that maybe, maybe I'm meant to be her son in the next lifetime, and that's why she has to get this 20-year head start on the next lifetime. But uh, who knows if we'll even recognize each other at that point. But Love goes on and life goes on. Yeah. Well, thank you. And Ben, did you want to do some more check-ins before we start talking about get out the vote? And Tom, thank you for that great, great link. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm a bit of a loss of how to make it's kind of a hard turn. Uh, but the, um, Frank, there are folks saying in the text chat, I don't know if you can read it, just how uh, how honored we are really that uh, for your vulnerability in really telling us what happened. I mean, I, I pictured it in my head and it's it's even more horrifying than I thought it was from the details I knew uh, from you. And um, well, I I understand it helps people. It helps me a little to, to go over it and to, to you know, it's, it really happened. It's really true. This was not a nightmare. This was not something that uh, it, it's helping me to round the corner to share it with people. And, uh, and of course, my name is Frank. What, I'm going to speak correctly. What choice have I got? 
Uh, there's also folks who are text her in the text chat to me, but it's really meant to each other. So I could be like Garrison Keeler and read out um, <laughs> Scott Yost, Amy, and Yogi send a hug to you, or uh, Bill O'Neill, Amy, and Yogi would like to connect <laughs> when you get there. But it'd be great if y'all would <laughs> write each other so that I don't have to do that, as, as fun as that is. I don't mean to, to point you out, Amy and Yogi. Just everybody um, make sure that you're sending it to everyone. There's a yeah. little blue box at the bottom. Make sure it says everyone. Blue box. Tom, we'd love to hear what you're up to. Well, actually, what, uh, what I feel called to share, first of all, I'm not doing any uh, get out the vote stuff in Oregon. We have the uh, vote by mail also. Uh, but there's an article in the New York Times that I saw just today that I put the link in. Uh, and it's about a really simple way to triple uh, people showing up to vote. Uh, that is much more efficient than anything else that's been tried. So people can look at that, that link. But it's interesting, after, after the story uh, we just had, I want to share when Karen, Karen, who was on the march, who I met on the march and had a 24-year uh, a, a relationship with, uh, died in 2010. And I, about six months after she died, uh, I had a weird thing happened. She, there were lots of things that could be interpreted as messages from the other side, kind of, but they're all could have other explanations too. But one of them, there's no other explanation to. And I've talked with some really hard nosed materialists and they couldn't figure out what to do with it, uh, which I'm just working away on my computer. And I suddenly noticed that all my sent emails and this might, all my emails are on my computer. They're not online. All my sent emails have a picture of Karen on her deathbed up in the upper right hand corner. And I'm going, what the fuck? Where did that come from? Uh, and I tr trying to figure out how to get rid of it. I go into my, my I, I used my computer back then. I didn't have a um, camera, a cell phone camera. And so I used, I used my computer as a, you know, as a camera. And I had taken several pictures of Karen in di different situations, including after she died. But there's hundreds of pictures on my computer and there's just one of her on her deathbed. Uh, and I'm trying to find where it is so I can remove it. And I go on to the, all of my photos that I have stored on my computer. And I, uh, and I found that picture and I copied it onto a, um, onto a thumb drive and erased it from the computer. And it didn't take it away from the, from the uh, picture on my, um, on my out mail, my sent mails. And I spent about half an hour trying to figure out what to do with it. And I couldn't figure out what to do with it. It's like, okay, hi, Karen, you know, and go back about my miss. About 20 minutes later, it's gone. <clears throat> uh, and I told several people, I asked several people in my house if they had gotten mails that had that in it. And they said, no. <clears throat> and I then, I, nobody, people wouldn't believe. They thought this is my imagination. And about, I don't know, four or five weeks later, it happened again. And I had the presence of mind to take a screenshot of it. <laughs> and then I, I discovered my, my new partner discovered after looking, looking around a whole pile that if you, if in the, in the Mac, if you have accounts on your computer, uh, if you put a picture in with your account, that picture can be programmed to go up in the upper right hand corner. I never even known that that was possible. So I went into the, the account, my account on the computer, and there was that picture, and I took it out of there, and that took it all away. So there was an answer, but it's not something I knew how to do, could not have done myself. Uh, and it's like, where the hell did that come from? You know, so that's among bunches of other things, like having a her picture on my desk and on a, in a frame, and in the middle of the night, I get wakened by this clunk sound and I wake up and it has fallen off but it hasn't you know usually if something's gonna fall it falls like this if it's a like a framed picture but it fell that way into the drawer that was underneath it's like wait a minute <laughs> but of course you say well maybe a truck went I don't know what but it's just still there's lots there's probably like 15 or so of those things that have stacked up about her mostly I did a bit of research and psychologists who work with this stuff 
say it's usually some form of electricity or electronics if there's some kind of you know you know the lights blinking i've also had that i had a light on my desk sort of explode and it's still i've never replaced it or fixed it it sits there with the you know punches of metal knocked off or um glass knocked off of it anyway so that's that's what i wanted to share uh, and I guess I can do a really quick, I'm, I'm still focusing on doing my work, my co-intelligence wise democracy work, but I also have, I have a friend, Michael Dowd, who was a uh, uh, most known during the 2000s and 2100s as a evolutionary evangelist, as a former, former Christian fundamentalist. And he, is that a hello or you're on your way, Sam, or what was that? That's, I just noticed Sam's in my on my screen. It was shout outs for Michael Dowd is what that oh, was, a, a bunch okay. of people. Okay, great. So most bunch of people know Michael. Uh, and he wrote a book called Thank God for Evolution. He totally reframed Christianity as a science-based evolutionary creation story and God is reality. And if you don't get right with God, there's gonna be consequences. It's like, okay, it's true, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, he has moved on because he has he has come to the conclusion that's, that the uh, you know, civilization is at its tipping point and is on its way out. Uh, and he has, uh, the, there's a site called postdoom.com, which is people who have concluded we're in a terminal thing as a civilization, if not as a species. Uh, and he has been interviewing them, including famous ones um, like Joanna Macy and stuff. And they, they're very inspiring. If you have any piece of you that is a, a gloom and doom kind of person, you would probably greatly benefit by and, and value listening to these, uh, listening to some of these tapes. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm in a project with him and the guy who helped me do my wise democracy pattern language uh, to do a pattern language, which I've, I've convinced Michael to shift from post doom to post gloom uh, because it's really the gloom that he's talking about getting beyond rather than the doom. Uh, and so we'll be trying to develop guidances for people who have that kind of perspective or the parts of them have that kind of perspective. And largely most of my other work has been kind of in a bubble. I'm really aware of the so many things that are coming down the pike and watching more of them bloom all the time. It's like, whoa. Uh, and then there's the joy of working on stuff that if we made it, this stuff would be part of making it. Uh, and in the meantime, I can suspend my disbelief and just dive into the interesting ideas and possibilities and people and just delve into that while I say I have like these two parallel universes running in my, in my mind. And of course, coming to terms with the, the, um, the real life experience of that stuff, which has happened in well, Eugene, Oregon, you know, that there's a you know, there were major fires around here as there have been all up and down the West Coast and smoke. We had, we came right to the edge of evacuation orders. We were prepared, got our little bags ready to go and looking at everything in my, my room. I'm in a co-op and I'm looking at everything in my little room that I live in go, what would I take and why? And it's just a very weird experience to sort of deconstruct your life like that. Uh, I went into major, you know, sort of numbness and that recognizing that I was experiencing that major disorientation uh, in a, uh, uh, <clears throat> in rather minor danger, danger scene, other people were in the process of losing their houses, you know, other people were getting wiped out by tornadoes and floods and all that. And I could see other people doing, you know, on my line, they're talking to each other as if everything's normal. And several weeks ago, I used to be in that position while other people's lives are being destroyed. And I sense this pecking order of disaster. And I was privileged in some ways and being totally fucked over in other ways. Uh, and that that's part of what this, what this is all about. Uh, and just and feeling that. I think that's probably yeah, it's interesting to vote by mail. One of the things that's true in Oregon is we have a citizen initiative review, which is randomly selected people, you know, a dozen, couple of dozen randomly selected people who spend almost a week 
looking at one of the initiatives on the ballot and reporting out to the uh, citizenry, to the voters, about what are the good arguments about it, what are the bad arguments about it. They interview experts, they interview pro people who are pro and people who are con. This is the only uh, place in the, in the world that has that. And that came out of my work. So that's one of the few things out of my work that actually ended up being institutionalized anyway. Outstanding. So, anyway, so we're, yeah, there's lots of weird stuff going on in Oregon, like everywhere else. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I guess I'll stop. Yeah, and definitely the fires are intense for a lot of people. So, hey, yeah. Merrick, you're looking a bit like a soccer mom with a pretty darn impressive beard. <laughs> What's with um, the family fan? <laughs> Um, is my, is my speaker on? Did I just fall out the room? Sorry. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. It's so different using Zoom on your phone than on your computer. Can you hear me? Okay, you can hear me good. Hey, um, yeah, I, I didn't know this was a soccer mom look. <laughs> but, um, it's good to see band. everyone. You're in a, it looks like you're in a family band. Oh, no, it's just my car, because my son's getting his hair cut. Okay. So I'm just patiently waiting, and then I'm googling. And I'm like, oh my god, that's right, we have the meeting right now. So I thought I'd join us because I love and miss you all. I'm so glad you joined us. I don't know if you saw Sam Wolf. Uh, Sam was raising his hand during Tom's talk, and I thought it was to ask a question, but and then he made like a like a like some <laughs> what's that movie uh, close encounters of the third kind type of hand signals but then he was leaving us so we had a delightful hour with sam wolf um and scott yost is is with us on on typing only um and just so many people have have come by and it's wonderful to see you merrick same here same here i wasn't what able to make the last one so i'm glad i could jump in today I am too. We're at the point where uh, we're, sh we're sharing how we're doing in particular what we're doing in terms of get out the vote. And so Lynn, I think you were going to talk to us from uh, Hawaii on this. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, well, I was wondering if anyone read the book Untrumping America. I'm afraid I'm not good on authors, but I uh, uh, got it at the local library and unfortunately I haven't finished it yet, but uh, they had a lot of good ideas. Um, I, particularly like the point that he was making that uh, not only just getting Trump out of the White House, but noting that there's also so many Trumpers well after him and, you know, for decades to come. And I think it's important to keep that focus as well. I'll just say real briefly for that is um, he was also suggesting in the book that really acting locally, you know, um, maybe, you know, the Democratic Party might have big funds, but the people that don't get funded are the little local elections. And, you know, those are the people that we really need to support because, uh, you know, all of their ambitions hopefully grow up as well. Um, I think I'll leave it with that for a moment and please discuss. Thank you. Uh, we've had a couple of text chat uh, things and uh, Stillwater uh, posted some things of what she's doing. And uh, Karen, I'm so glad that you brought this up because I heard this not from Karen, but from Lenore's family that, you know how it says in the, when they have the, the obituary, it says in lieu of flowers, send donation to this group. Well, her in lieu of flowers is send donations to Karen Jeffers Tracy. And I wondered if you can tell us a little bit more about the work you're doing. Well, um, my GoFundMe described some of the work and uh, Lenore was very instrumental over, ye over many years, um, helping me to hone what I was doing and focus it and um, I guess my, my work is in communicating uh, key aspects of climate science to people who uh, it shapes their opinion of climate change. So yes, there are those Trumpsters that are on the far end, but in between, there are a lot of people that just don't know. They just aren't that aware of climate, just like Greta Thunberg said. She said they, a lot of people just don't understand the crisis and the urgency of it. And so I've developed many different training platforms to use to reach different groups of people. And I'm still doing it now online through um, Zoom and um, uh, especially kinesthetic learning, which is 
where how a lot of people uh, get their scientific and technical information is through participatory hands-on activities rather than just do TED Talks or reading scientific reports or articles. And that's a third of voters. So that's why I think it's really important to get that information into people's heads and hands and hearts. Um, and, and Lenore uh, encouraged me in that and always, um, and, and really wanted to give it some more wings. So when she passed, that was her request. And I'm really honored that she chose that. And her friends and family have been donating in her name. And uh, there are some really significant things that I'm doing with that money. So thank you very much for listening. And feel free to ask me any questions about climate or come and help or any, anything you'd like me to do. You can present to any group you have. <laughs> Do, do we just go to GoFundMe and look up your name? I'm not real familiar with Um, I posted the link. So here's share, let's see, copy link. Yeah, I posted the link in the chat. Do you get the chat over here? Yeah, I do. Okay. okay here's the link. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. And I and, and if you and if you're on there, then I, I just post the updates as to everything I'm doing as I'm doing it. So right. um, if you don't have time to work on climate, then uh, you will vicariously work on climate <laughs> by supporting me. Right. Thank you for your work. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thank you. And I'd love to hear from the, the oh, so Anne says that Lori Kinzel is calling for Back to Blue, Pennsylvania. Um, what is that? She shrugs. Anne Stillwater is shrugging for those of you who can't see what we're doing. Well, we um, actually, if I can speak to it, um, my sister-in-law sent me something that there's a poll that shows that if PA goes for Biden, there's a 96% chance that Biden will win. So a lot of people across the country, including in Colorado, Lori in Colorado, and my sister-in-law in Maryland near DC are making phone calls to Pennsylvania voters um, or just, I don't know, maybe they're, I don't know if they're calling randomly, if they're calling Pennsylvania voters, if they're calling people who voted in the Democratic primary or in the last Democratic. I mean, I don't, I don't know the details about any of these, but I do know that the one that my sister, the one my sister-in-law is doing, um, which is called PA Volunteer Team 2020.slack.com. They have it all set up where the computer automatically makes the phone calls um, and it gives you a variety of, of talking points depending on what the person is interested in. And it sounds like it's very easy to navigate. Um, and um, so just to let people know that that kind of technology exists, I'm actually doing some calls for a local organization. Um, and we have a, a database, an Excel spreadsheet um, that we're sharing, and we take take turn. You know, we, we we have a whole bunch of volunteers, and each of us takes some block of people, and then calls and tries to talk to people. But I really like the the um, Tom sent out a link to a New York Times article that talks about how people just aren't picking up the phone or responding to texts because they're getting overwhelmed. And with my phone calls that I'm making, I'm realizing that that's what's happening. I haven't really talked to anybody. Um, and when they realize who I am, they hang up on me usually right away. Um, so I think that the triple the vote of, of if you find someone, ask them to talk to three of their friends because if they'll, they'll accept a text from their friend, but from a stranger, they probably won't. And I'd love to hear what other people are, are doing and hearing about getting out the vote. And with that, I will mute, thank you. Well, uh, Alex. Yeah, I've been doing with my um, neighbors, we've been doing postcards for months and they're beautiful postcards. And depending on where we send them, there's uh, like we're doing Georgia, we're doing North Carolina, we're doing Arizona, we're doing Pennsylvania, we're doing all these places. And each one has a specific um, guideline. Like right now I'm doing a bunch in, uh, I think it's North Carolina of people that may have fallen off the red, that may not still be registered. And we put a little thing in the corner that says, this is how you register. So really specifically addresses a certain thing for those people, not just go out and vote uh, democratic, but just you know get out there, this is how you do it. Because sometimes people, the 
figuring it out is the hard part. So anyway, we've been doing that for months. We have a little get together one night a week with five of us. And then as many as we can do during the week, we mail them on out. And I don't pick up the phone. <laughs> That's great. Penny, can you tell us more about Vote Forward? Yeah, I uh, was invited to a letter writing party, which I'm going to be doing tomorrow afternoon. And the organization is called Vote Forward. And although it is to get the left mobilized, the letters themselves are mostly just not that specific vote for this or vote for this person or that, but just to get people voting. But they are targeted to um, Democratic voters who are unlikely to vote. So who makes these designations and determinations? I don't know. Um, so I downloaded 20 letters yesterday. So they're to specific people and then there's a template and then you write a, a note about why voting is so important to you and encouraging them to vote and they are ta set a target for 10 million letters and I think they're at 6.9 as of yesterday so um, I'm gonna do my 20 and then I'll keep going and then they all get mailed at once at a date that seems particularly late, but is a study to be the most effective date. And it's actually towards the end of October. Um, so you sign up and then you, I, they are, I think doing a little vetting. Um, so, uh, which is good. So um, it took, you know, I don't know, I, their acceptance of me kind of got lost in the shuffle of things. So it might take, they say 24 to 36 hours. So, um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. So um, I, I, I don't like phone calls. They're very intrusive. And, um, and it's like when people call me up and go, I know I vote, you know, uh, so, but I think a letter, someone can look at it and, they put it on the desk, you know, they might pick it up and look at it a couple of times before they uh, toss it out and it actually gets to them rather than, you know, a truncated message on an answering machine if it's there at all. So um, I was just found out about this a couple of weeks ago. So I, I'm kind of excited because that's something I can do. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what Vote Forward is and as much as I know about it. Thank you. That's that's that is exciting. And Donna Williams, I didn't know that about October twentieth. What else do you know about mail-in voting? Or just what are you up to in general, Donna? So that that date, October twentieth, is based on how the U.S. National Postal Service is working. So try to get your mail-in ballots in before that. Other mail and postal information would depend state by state. So in my state, there's a website you can go to that says whether or not you're registered and you know how you're registered to vote by mail or otherwise. And in our state, it's all mail and pretty much. You're in Montana, right? Yes, sir. What's what's going on? Like, are, are they mailing postcards there? Are they calling people? What are the what are the activities there? Um. I'm not sure I'm keyed into that so much. I mean, I was invited to a rally to meet the candidates and, you know, people passed out buttons and, and registered to vote there. Um, I have a friend who works with Forward Montana and she goes around and um, asks people if they're registered to vote and that's kind of her whole job. Um, and then like many people, my phone is just flooded with all kinds of calls that I ignore because, and it's all about, I mean, it's all about this. Um, so it's just, it's kind of, yeah, you have to tune it out after a while. And Jennifer Looney, we heard from you at the beginning. Uh, how are things going with you? What are you doing with this get out the vote or anything or parenting? Boy, I hope he doesn't need parenting. 
you say parenting? <laughs> 38 years old does not need parenting. My bad. <laughs> it's more turning the other way, is that I'm the one who needs parenting. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I'm not doing much about the get out the vote, except frame, I guess. Um, California is pretty much vote by mail. Uh, I did during the primary get involved, very involved in a local in our 50th district, which uh, I don't know if you know Daryl Issa, uh, but he is running against um, a wonderful man named uh, Amar Kappa Najjar. And so I was involved with his campaign, uh, but uh, there's other too much life stuff going on right now for me to get involved in the voting other than to do it. Uh, but yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a slack. What can I say? <laughs> no, just this time. <laughs> I doubt that's, that's true. I, I heard you I heard you might be getting a, an RV. Oh, really? Can I out you as a possible? Is there a, a rumor mill going around? <laughs> I, I, I cannot confirm or deny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is true I, that I have. Uh, I have purchased a van, and I am going to nomad across the country for a while. Yeah, that's crazy, but that's me. My dad lived on a sailboat for years, so I can live in a van. <laughs> so yeah, I hope maybe I'll come visit some people. <laughs> I won't Please. stay too long. <laughs> really? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> yes, I'm right near Boston, so it's there's a lot going on. And so many of us Never have <laughs> had this pipe dream of buying land and all retiring, and, and maybe we can join Barbara and Jennifer, and people just become a nomadic tribe like we were once on foot. We're trying to, we're trying to convince Dennis Ashley to join us, too. So. <laughs> and Alex, you said you might want to join us. So, hey, yes, <laughs> yep, we are open. We want to build a tribe, and tribes are really cool in the nomad world. They travel places together and they go off in separate groups for periods of time, whatever. But you take care of each other. You, if something breaks down or something happens, you've always got your family, your tribe there to take care of you. So, you're not as uh, isolated if you're traveling all alone, but you have that option to go off and do your own thing for a while and come back to the tribe. And the potlucks are awesome. Yeah. It sounds very familiar, and they have a judicial board, and they have a peace academy. And... <laughs> no, hopefully we don't have security because I'm not taking that job again. <laughs> no city council either. No city council. <laughs> Merrick right. looks quite at home in his in his SUV. That could be home for you, Merrick. Yeah. He's yes. like, no, you're yes. muted, bro. You're muted. And you muted. unmuted and you muted again and then you went. There we go. I was just saying it's a small car. I don't know why the perception is that it's bigger, but it's not. It's just a little uh, Kia Optima. So I would never drive something that big because it just seems too big. With one kid, you don't need a huge vehicle. Well, how are you doing besides waiting for kids' haircuts? Um, overall, fairly well. You know, we're, we're, we're still moving forward with adoption, so I'm going to be in a, a real, real dad, um, although I'm doing everything that's real, including spending all my money, uh, which is fun and wonderful, um, and all my time. So a lot of it re re revolves around being a dad, being him, being his dad, and work. Work is very hectic. So um, we're, I will still work with the homeless community. So it's still, and that those numbers are starting to rise. Mm -hmm. uh, they're about to drop the uh, the stop, the uh, exclusion of not being able to evict people soon. So we're waiting for that to kind of hit our community really hard. Merrick, where where do you live? Still Buffalo, always Buffalo. Okay. Yeah, in case anybody missed the story recently, um, I heard on NPR that 
the CDC has um, done an exa a, a public health order that people can't be evicted through the end of the year. But you have to know that and you have to go on to the CDC's, I think, webpage and download this form and turn it in to say, if I'm evicted, I will have to live with other relatives um, or be homeless. And, and then they can't evict you. And a lot of people who are being evicted don't know that. So. Well, there's also the techniques that's being done by a lot of landlords, which includes turning off your electric, your gas, your water, uh, changing the locks while you're gone. And people don't know that they have a right to fight that as well. I deal, mm -hmm. work very closely with our neighborhood legal services, a local not-for-profit, so. Thank you. Sorry, I got a little distracted. A tall, beautiful, blonde woman walked in to my hotel room. Um, Janet, I'd love to hear more from you. We heard from you at the beginning. How are you? Perhaps no longer by your computer. Dan Coogan, we talked about your photo, but we haven't heard how you're doing. Hey, everybody. Um, Dan Coogan. Uh, resident of Phoenix for 30 years as of September 8th um, this year. So I moved out here September 8th, 1990. Um, first of all, I just want to say I love you guys. I, I haven't participated enough in the uh, these Zoom things with you guys. Uh, I think this is the second one I've done, but uh, I did go to the Ventura uh, reunion and that was amazing to see everybody. And uh, I just look back at, you know, me at 22, you know, full of energy. Uh, and, you know, I think th that kid did a great job. <laughs> I, I don't know, you know, I was just so determined to prove something or, you know, I was into the cause, but also was into the cause of um, proving that I could do what I did. And I'm glad I did it. Stuck to my guns. Um, I've got a lot of pictures that need to be scanned and I just don't have time or energy to do it and I don't know uh, maybe I'll never get to it maybe I'll get to it next year um so after the march I finished up my Kent State degree uh, it's six hours to finish and I they basically let me use the peace march as an independent study for six hours uh I ended up working in Cleveland for about three years for a commercial photographer uh that was a great experience worked for a few other people before him but I uh, got a full-time job and then I had a girlfriend that wanted to move back to Arizona, which I agreed to go. And uh, we were together for five years. And then I got married to uh, the woman I'm married to now and getting divorced, <laughs> fortunately. Well, it's it's mostly amicable. I am I hate to say, but I'm married to a hoarder. And uh, it's, it's uh, you know, it doesn't, it's like being an alcoholic or a drug addict or any other addiction. You can't change them. I got to hit a bottom. And so whether you say anything or have tantrums or say nothing, it doesn't change. So um, I'm going to be moving. I'm still cohabitating with my wife, Angela, or legally separated wife, Angela. Um, so I've been doing commercial photography essentially since I moved here. I've had a, a good run. I had a great run. Uh, but the commercial photography business is, has changed a lot over the decades. And uh, I, I'm terrible at marketing myself as good as I think I am, which I think I'm pretty good. Uh, you know, people do find me on the internet. I'm, you know, I got my website up and it's good, but I don't update it enough. Um, and the other uh, big thing in my, well, there was two things. Uh, I invested into a marijuana dispensary, uh, which it took a long time to break even. And I did in November and now I'm making some real money every month and that should go on for a long time. Yay. Yay me, um, very grateful for that. Um, it's been a long road. I had a lot of debt. I put 193,000 in and borrowed 260 from my family and friends. So that's a lot of debt and uh, I paid off all my debt and now I've got another year and quarter for the rest of my family and friends to be uh, the obligation I have to them. And uh, I've been driving Uber and Lyft to make extra money, which I'm grateful for that. It's worked out well. Um, and, you know, looking to get a mortgage here in the next few months and uh, keep moving forward. So uh, 
as far as the voting thing, I've had an opportunity to talk with a lot of people, you know, driving them around. I remember when, you know, in the last election, I was like, you know, look, Trump is not going to win, but he could win. And that was really my attitude. I said, there's no way he's going to win, but he could win. And uh, I argued with a lot of people in a very pleasant manner. But, uh, you know, being the lone Democrat, I was like, but like I was sword fighting the, the red menace there many, many times. Um, and, and I do fear that he'll get reelected. Um, you know, Biden probably wouldn't have been my first choice, but he's our choice now. And I support the team and I hope to God, uh, you know, he wins and I hope to God they can um, put off the Supreme Court nominee until uh, Biden is our new president. Um, I don't know. It's a crazy, I have a crazy complicated life. I, I still love uh, laughing and comedy and I love all you guys. I just can't believe I was involved in this Peace March thing so many years ago. I tell people I did it and they're just like, what, what did you do? And uh, I'm like, I was younger then, but, and, and that's why I asked how old Sam was. I'm just like, oh my God, I'm almost as old as he was then. It's just, Tom, how old were you? Tom Atley, how old were you on the uh, Peace March? Uh, I guess it'd be 30, 39. 40 years. 39. Thir 39, so I'm older yeah. than you were then, so, <laughs> wow. No, and I tend to compare myself to things and other people. Like, I remember seeing the Rolling Stones in 1989. I'm like, I'm older than Mick Jagger was then. Just crazy. But anyway, um, I think I'm a young 57. That's in my mind. I'm, I remember Debbie Harry. She got interviewed on CBS uh, Sunday Morning News uh, by um, uh, Tracy, uh, whatever her name is. And uh, she's 74. And she's like, you know, I'm 74. I don't feel 74 in my head, but I shouldn't be dressing like, you know, a 24 year old. Anymore. So anyway, but uh, that's about it. Just, you know, trying to keep it going and uh, love and life, everybody stay grateful. Hey, and, and congratulations on the dispensary. There's so, a, a guy named Sam Wolf who might have some need of your services. Yeah, I don't, apparently. I tell people I, I don't work there. I don't hire people or fire them. I don't have keys. I'm just a, I'm an own, part owner. I own 12 and a half percent and then three and a half percent of a cultivation that provides, you know, like I said, real income. But I'm also sober since 1982. So when I went, the, went on the march, I was sober, you know, three years. And uh, yeah, and still 38 years from alcohol, 37 years from marijuana, I'm still the same sober uh, guy that I was then, but just many years later. So I'm very, very grateful for AA and uh, you know everything that it's helped me to achieve that you know Zen serenity that I try to carry through. Sam just anyway, wants so seeds. Seeds. Yeah, plant. I don't have any seeds. Oh, I can send him some pictures keys. of some big seeds. plants. He just has I don't share. have anything. I just have a shareholder in this uh, two two companies. So. Annette anyway, has to thank leave you, us. everyone. And, and oh, thank you, Dan, and congratulations thank on your sobriety. And uh, some you. folks are, are leaving. Uh, we're coming to the end of our time. Annette, it was lovely to see you. Donna, same. Janet, I would love to hear from you a tiny bit. Hey, now that I'm here. I'm here. I just wanted to say I'm 10 days out from my second hip surgery. Wow. So I had a total hip replacement 10 days ago and it was agonizing at first, but now I'm doing pretty good. And uh, in a week or two, I'll be walking like I used to walk. Maybe Yay. better. Yay. So use your prayers in the, in the meantime for the healing. You have them, and we are going to keep on walking forward, as this song says. Oh my goodness, it's y'all are so beautiful. It's good, good to see you. I, I wish we could see Scott's lovely face, but I guess that couldn't happen. Um, let's do this again. I'm happy to host. Um, I'm happy to help facilitate. Thank you, JD, again for recording. Uh, thank you, Anne. Thank you, Barbara. Um, let's sing it, Ben, before we go. What, what are we going to say? Keep on walking forward.
forward. Keep on, Keep on walking, walking forward. forward. Keep on walking forward. Never, Never turn back. Never turn back. Lynn wanted to say something. I love you all. Peace. Hey, thank you. We love you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.